This is KC Sports Network, proudly presented by M Prize Bank. Hello and welcome into another edition of Three Ma. John Kurtz, Derek Young with you today. No Cole, but uh, we've got DY for a lot of football recruiting and what I would have to deem a five star show. No, that's not because Cole is gone necessarily, but it's because we are talking about a five star visiting. K-State this past weekend, that being Lincoln Cure. Uh, This has been talked about for a long time. We have felt like he is a K-State lean for a long time, and he finally got to make his official visit after visiting Kansas, Texas A&M, and Oregon. So we're here to recap the visit and get you caught up on a lot that's been happening with K-State football recruiting. They have a bevy of commitments in the last couple of weeks as they are pretty red hot on the recruiting trail. So we'll get D.Y. to uh, recap all of that for us. So gather around, pull up. Uh, a chair, and make sure that you have a glass of Ben Holiday bottled in Bond Bourbon or 360 Vodka from our friends at Holiday Distillery. Great K-State folks who support us here on the pod. So make sure that you go support them. Ben Holiday bottled in Bond Bourbon is great if you are a bourbon drinker. If not, the 360 Vodka uh, will definitely satisfy you as well. And make sure you're getting stocked up right now for not just the lake, but uh, football season right around the corner. Uh, D.Y., welcome back from Cabo. Looking nice and a uh, little, little sun. I can still tell you got a little bit of sun. More red than anything. So. Yeah, it was more red. Dude, that sun's intense, man. I was just there in May. That's uh, that's a pretty pretty intense sun that'll that'll be down on you. So. Yeah, it'll cook you. Yeah. Uh, okay, well, K-State's, uh, K-State's cooking on the recruiting trail a little bit right now. Uh, Lincoln Cure was in town for a visit. There were a lot of clips and pictures that surfaced over the weekend because Avery Johnson seems to be uh, about the best recruiter you could possibly ask for as a, a quarterback to really galvanize things. He put the picture on Twitter of them golfing. It was him, Lincoln here, Chris Kleiman, and Matt Wells. Um, there were lots of pictures and videos of Dylan Edwards along with Lincoln Cure and Avery Johnson at a photo shoot at the uh, at the Bill. There was video and Instagram live stream going on there for a while. So by all accounts, I mean, it it seems like this this went about as well as you could have possibly asked for. Yeah, I don't know that Kansas State needed a grand slam. Obviously, it would have been nice, but they needed, you know, they needed a productive at bat to basically maintain and sustain their lead. And I think they did that, and probably more. Um, you alluded to a lot of the events that were at least available to us through social media, uh, Instagram Live, Twitter, whatever it might be, um, that really made it seem. Like they ruled out the red carpet form as you would expect, but that they kind of turned this thing into more <laughs> of a of a party celebration almost. Uh, it seemed like, and yeah, uh, obviously Avery Johnson was the host, and, and I can't think of a better choice, right? Uh, because he was kind of viewed as that you know kingpin uh, inside the state as well. So those two could probably relate upon that. Uh, he's probably a significant draw for for a guy like Lincoln Cure as well. So, you know, I, I think maybe they needed a double or a triple at the very least. I think they did that at more. Um, I, I come out of this thinking that this remains pretty status quo. You, you guys know me. I, I haven't really shifted with my thinking on this as others have uh, on, on a variety of different networks or, or whispered like, oh, you know, watch out for this team. I've said all, all along that I thought Kansas State was in the lead. I, I still think they are. I, I said all along that the only team that could beat them was Oregon. I still think that to be true, too. I think that the Texas A&M and KU stuff uh, that kind of leaked out and, and kind of rose to the surface here in the last few months, I didn't really buy into that. Um, he gave them a look, but they were never as threatening as Oregon. I mean, did anything happen coming out of the Oregon visit to make you – rethink anything at all uh no what what was the vibe of the Oregon visit I mean I think he had a good time and I think the, that's a school that was the only other school that could really turn his head even a little bit besides K-State to be quite honest in my opinion but again um nothing changed for me I think this has been K-State all along I'd be surprised if it didn't still finish that way and just for those you know if you are someone that hasn't followed this recruitment a ton I mean he's obviously an in-state guy and uh, has risen through the ranks to become a five star by almost everybody. Eric, <clears throat> just one, um, actually just one, but he's an industry five star because he's a top thirty prospect now. I, I, you know, 
don't hold me to this because I'm not the one doing the rankings, but I think before it's all said and done, you'll be a five star on three as well. I know. I just I just had to give you a little little print up there. Um, but he's he's been a lifelong K State fan, and that's a big part of why we have felt this entire time that things were going to uh, to wind up going the Wildcats way. And it certainly helps when you have all the momentum that K State has right now as a as a program, and then <clears throat> specifically with the offense and Avery Johnson at at quarterback. I think all those things have have led to K-State being in a really good position here, weather the storm with with losing Colin Klein, um, and obviously that that brought Texas A&M into the picture a little bit. But that's kind of your your backstory in a nutshell here about how K-State is is closing in on potentially landing a, a five-star recruit here, almost consensus five-star recruit in-state in Lincoln Cure. So it's before we leave Lincoln Cure for now. Anything else you feel like people need to know? Like what, what would you expect, I guess, as a timeline? Because this is the question I was already getting, like, what do you expect as a, a timeline for a potential announcement here now that the uh, the official visits are all done? It won't be that much longer. Two weeks at the most, probably. Uh, could definitely be sooner than that. But this is not one that's going to leak into the fall. It will be done by the end of June or the first week of July, if I had to reason, reasonably guess. Uh, timing's tough, but I don't think he's going to take too much time. Okay, so just a little bit of patience required, everybody. Not too terribly much, just a little bit of patience here. Uh, a lot of commitments lately for uh, K State. Where do you want to start here, DY? You've had what seven commitments in the last couple weeks? Is that number right, or, or is it six? Uh, seven. You nailed it. Seven. Okay, seven commits in the last couple weeks for K State on the recruiting trail. Not even including Lincoln Cure. So, who do you think is the headliner of this group? Yeah, it's interesting. I, there's a few that I like, and then there's a few that I know were really, really high on the Kansas State board, and some of those align, some of those don't, right? So I know they really, really like wide receiver Adonis Moise or Moise from IMG Academy in Florida. Um, I don't hate him. i just probably not as high on him as K-State, but they really, really like him. I think he's going to be a terrific asset to the program. And as someone, they, they, they landed early in the month, so kind of grabbing a receiver that they were very, very high on early is a good thing. Good offer list as well. I think Kansas was on them and a few other Big 12 programs, maybe some Big 10 ones as well, ACC. So uh, uh, a good recruiting battle. I know they really, really like quarterback JoJo Scott, also of Florida in Lakeland. Um, I think he might have been their favorite quarterback altogether. So to land him was huge. I thought, I think that they perceived that that one would, be quite a recruiting battle because of how good he is um and so i think uh, his commitment obviously excited him quite a bit but i think it surprised him too as well so and he's one of my favorites i think there's a chance he might be the best player in the class at the end of the day um not not everyone has evaluated and ranked him yet i would imagine um if it aligns with what i think kent state thinks some other programs think that his recruiting might shock people when it kind of hits hits the scene because I bet it's a little bit higher than most are anticipating it to be. And I really like McGuire Richmond, the linebacker from Kansas City, Blue Valley High School. Um, you know, his brother played in Iowa. So for him to commit to Kansas State before taking that Iowa visit, canceling the Iowa City trip, I think is pretty significant. Gave the Wildcats a third linebacker commit in the class. I, I love his uh, blend of size and speed as well. And then Martell Jackson, uh, someone I really didn't have my eyes on yet, uh, a corner from Derby High School. So they're they're, you know, popping that lid off at Derby High School little by little all of a sudden. So that that's probably a good move moving forward as well. But he's a long corner, just like JoJo Scott. JoJo Scott listed at six foot two. So is Martell Jackson at six foot two. Both guys can run. So it kind of goes into that archetype that Kansas State's building a corner. Go get these huge guys that can really really run. And uh, we'll teach him how to play quarterback. I mean, judging by the offer list here, it looks like JoJo Scott would have the the most impressive there. Kansas, Wisconsin, Georgia Tech, Nebraska, West Virginia, Louisville, Iowa State. Um, All those are new, too. Most of those are in the last month or two. Okay, so a guy that, yeah, was definitely trending upward. Um, yeah, I mean, McGuire Richmond... Also very interesting there. Because, I mean, he has an Iowa offer, and and you mentioned his brother. I mean, is that starting off surprised? Yeah, are you surprised by the fact that K State landed him and landed him at this point? 
they have a, a really, I mean, they recruited his brother hard too, even though he just, he committed to Iowa before he could camp at K-State. And that's how that happened with Mason Richmond, who's now a starting offensive tackle at Iowa. So it's not surprising to me because I think the, the family and the staff knew each other very, very well. So it's not surprising that Kansas State was the pick. To me, it's surprising that they were able to get him on board before he even took that Iowa visit. Yeah, agreed. Um, definitely a good sign. The Derby thing, I'm glad that you bring that up because it felt like for a while, it was like I know almost a running running joke that like Brandon Clark, the head coach there, former K-State wide receiver, was not helping the old alma mater out very much at all. But it's a place that you definitely want some inroads, man. I mean, they, they're consistently churning out a lot of talent and um, – it feels to me like this is kind of a K State special, right? Like even early on in the the tenure, it became pretty apparent when these guys, even if it is somebody that's a little more under the radar at first, if they're landing guys that they're evaluating in person at camps and guys that they like really early on in the process, it's it's generally a pretty good thing. Like they're they're good talent evaluators. I mean, the problem for K State recruiting wise is never about evaluating talent. It's being able to, especially in this day and age, you know, the power two world that we're living in, being able to to pull it to the finish line if if a guy blows up and has a bunch of Big Ten and SEC offers. But that, that to me is like just speaks to their ability to identify talent. And I will be, very much buy in on that probably being a, a, a good a good prospect to be after uh, like K-State is right now. Yeah, they kind of combine that talent evaluation that's kind of stuck to K-State through and through year after year, regardless of who the coach coaching staff is and combined it with this staff that I wouldn't say is totally prolific at winning these very contentious recruiting battles, but they are competitive enough that they win their fair share. And that's probably enough at Kansas state in their world to be very, very successful. It already has been right. They already have a big 12 championship. They've already landed some very highly coveted players on the recruiting trail. When you go back to like, you know, in Avery Johnson, Dylan Edwards just now. Right. And and hopefully in the near future, Lincoln Cure, they're able to get, kind of get some of these guys. And I think it speaks volumes to where the program is right now. But the blend of evaluation and, you know, they're going to pluck a, a, a coveted kid or, or a few of those in the future um, and, and that are highly ranked almost in every class. So I think it's a, just a really good blend. And you talk about those diamonds in the rough. And you mentioned Martel Jackson kind of having that profile just because he's an in-state kid and they typically don't miss on those, the in-state kids that they pursue. That, that, I mean, that should be the biggest selling pitch that they should have to an in-state kid. Very seldom or very rarely does an in-state kid go to Kansas State on scholarship and have a less than desirable career. They typically always turn out because they're not going to give up on those kids too. Those are the ones that, you know, they pour into – a little bit more and have a lot of success. So I like that. But the diamond in the rough too, that I would, you know, out of the, the last seven, you mentioned Martel Jackson. I really like Sawyer, Sawyer Shilk, um, the linebacker that they landed out of Kearney, Nebraska. A, another example of a guy with a blend of size and, and really good speed for his size as well. I think Nebraska was very intrigued by him. Like K-State, they wanted him to camp, come to campus and work out in front of them. He just didn't. He only did that at K-State. Yeah, I want to ask more about that. You're mentioning him at linebacker. I know he's listed as an edge. There's another edge that uh, that K State pulled in a commitment from as well. But first, I'm wearing some home field apparel today and got my uh, nice like baseball tee going on. You guys know him. You'll love him. Home field apparel, best place to get your college gear. Homefieldapparel.com. You can check out the 50 plus K State offerings that they have there. You can also branch out, pick a different school. I was told by a podcast listener recently that one of their favorite things is to wait and see what school Derek is wearing uh, these days. So I'm, I'm imagining it's not anything today because I haven't seen you stick up it, the shirt. It is. It's just, it's, I, I, I just grew something on, so there's no meaning behind it, but I got Louisville. So, okay. Okay. Uh, just a, a meaningless Louisville Cardinal, uh, Cardinal sweatshirt uh, hoodie that DY has on today. So there, there's your answer. For those keeping track at home, um, DY's got a ton of different schools there. They've got 100-plus online. So you could continue to do this uh, until your until your heart's uh, totally full, whatever it is that you want to track down at homefieldapparel.com, and you can do it getting 15% off your first order using promo code 3MAW23. 
Again, that is promo code 3 mile 23 to get 15% off your first order at homefieldapparel.com. We are back in just a moment. We appreciate you supporting KC Sports Network by listening to our podcast. You have helped us become the highest ranked Chiefs podcast network in 2022 and 2023. And don't forget about our daily Substack newsletter, the best written analysis you can find on the Chiefs straight to your inbox every day. KCSN.substack.com. So we were just talking about Sawyer Shilk, Shilky. We apologize not being totally firm on that last name. It, so he's a linebacker, not an edge. What he projects right. the next level. Okay. Yeah, a linebacker. Uh, they have three linebackers in the class already. It wouldn't surprise me by the end of. It could be later when they add another one. It wouldn't surprise to add a fourth. Uh, they made them all aware that that was on the table. What about Dalton Knapp, uh, listed as as an yeah. edge? Is yep. out of Great Grapevine, Texas. Uh, what are your thoughts there on what K State is getting? Uh, some people have kind of thrown out like a comparison to Nate Matlack from a size and, and measurable standpoint. That's probably pretty accurate. Uh, it's a guy that if he gets his weight up, um, can really probably be a menace off the edge because he can really move as well. So, you know, they're looking just upside here, right? You look at this guy; they're not taking him for what he is now. They're taking him for what he's going to be. Um, and and that might happen as soon as this season. I think he's on. You know, probably poised to have a really strong final high school season. Uh, he's, you know, about 220 pounds or so right now, maybe a little less. They'll, they'll probably want him to hit at least 240 at, at K-State and kind of be that pass rusher. So um, the length is there. The upside is there. Um, if he can get his weight up and, and remain as athletic and twitchy as he is, then you're then you really got something. I think the only guy from the recent bunch we haven't talked about yet is Dominic Mitchell, uh, safety out of Phoenix. Uh, what what does he project as at the next level? Yeah, he's a safety. Drew saw him in person uh, at K-State camp, and I haven't, and I haven't dug into him a ton yet. So he would probably be the better person to ask, to be quite honest. But I can kind of show, share the profile, you know, and everything that happened there. I don't think it's a guy that was heavily recruited. You'd have to correct me if I'm wrong on the offer sheet. But the guy that they saw, I think the guy that they were intrigued about after seeing him in the spring and said, hey, come to camp and earn this thing. And that's exactly what he did. So uh, a guy that they had their eye on and were intrigued about. And then he confirmed their suspicions by performing very well in Manhattan at one of the first few camps at K-State. Yeah, I mean, you're you're right on the offer list. It's It's nothing terribly impressive. A lot of G5 stuff. Uh, going on there, so nothing really at the Power 5 level. Again, back to the the point about K-State's evals. If you trust the evals, that would be something to buy into. Uh, as you mentioned, like, hey, recruiting, not for the faint of heart. They're they're getting in tough battles pretty regularly these days. They haven't all gone their way recently. Let's start with, like, Lucas Allgaier, uh, an offensive lineman who commits to Iowa that was definitely one that I know stung for uh, for a lot of fans. What do you what do you attribute that to? How, how big of a loss is that? Yeah, I think Kansas State entered that final weekend with a with a lead of some kind. Um, how big is in the eye of the beholder? Only Lucas Allgaier probably knows. But Iowa erased that lead and won the recruitment based on just their official visit. What I will say is I think – Anything that Iowa says when recruiting an offensive lineman is probably pretty powerful. So I would imagine that that's part of it, even if the coach is, you know, on the verge of retirement at any point, right? So that they probably have that working against them, recruiting against them nonstop. It's what Kansas State had when Bill Snyder was the coach. But when you have the offensive line pedigree that Iowa does, I think that works. They've recruited on Mar, they recruit them long. Um, Iowa has a really good footprint in St. Louis as well. And, and I think you just uh, a bond with the coaching staff there um, that really clicked. And I think you also, I believe, I hope I'm not screwing this up, you have a family member to play for Iowa as well. So I think that weighed a little bit on the shoulders of him too. I think it's an uncle that was a Hawkeye offensive lineman at one point. So there is a family legacy there that probably had some draw as well. Okay. Fair enough. Yeah, offensive lineman Iowa. Uh, that's that's always going to make a little bit of sense. Uh, Leo Almanza, safety, goes to Baylor. You lose a safety to West Virginia as well. So I know there's been a little bit of consternation from people on, like, hey, what's what's going on at, at safety right now in this class? Yeah, Leo Almanza, another guy that they really, really loved. So uh, I think the hope is that they can get back in on that at some point. 
Um, and the door may be cracked a little bit if you just think theoretically, right? Because of Dave Aranda's, you know, his seat isn't exactly cool right now, I guess is the way to put it. And if they don't have a really good season in Waco, he could easily beat out the door. So that's probably someone not to completely erase from your mind, but he is going to Baylor instead of K-State. That one stung because of how much they love Leo Almanza. But, uh, you know, I think the what kind of what I've heard that tipped the scales in the favor of the Bears is they are actually going to let him play corner, or at least that's what they said to him, and I think that intrigued them. Uh, Sirius Stenyard that picked West Virginia. You know, some people said, well, he wasn't sure about being so-and-so because Kansas State already had two corners. Well, again, Kansas State recruited him as a safety, so that wasn't a problem. I heard something about staying closer to home. Um, he's from He goes to high school in Tampa, so I'm not sure West Virginia is any closer to Kansas to tip the scale. So that part confused me that playing close to home and close to his parents was important, but maybe he is someone up there closer to West Virginia that I am aware of. All right, what else? What else, D.Y.? I know they've had uh, some in-state visitors here recently. What else is hot right now on the, the K-State football recruiting radar? Right. They just had four visitors, I believe, offensive lineman Keaton Jones from Coffeyville, same high school that produced Darrell Jones, the corner. That is still on campus. They had Brock Heath, the offense, four-star offensive lineman from Blue Valley Northwest on campus uh, for an official visit. That's another one. It's between Kansas State and depending on any talk to, Like, Iowa thinks it's them or Kansas State. Kansas State thinks number two or 1A to their, or 1B to their 1A is Northwestern, I believe. So Mm. that's interesting to think about. They think academic prestige could play a role at some point. So we'll see what happens with Brock Heath. Um, uh, That's an interesting one. I think his father played basketball at K State uh, in the late 80s or early 90s. I'm not sure which one. So that's an interesting recruitment. So those two in state offensive linemen visited K State. Monterey Wellston, who I kind of call like a diet, Bill Edwards. If you turn on his tape, uh, the running back from Arkansas, Monterey Wellston, if you turn on his tape, it, you'll know what I mean. When I say diet, Dylan Edwards, it's just he's a home run hitter. Um, I'm one of my favorite players in the class. I, I still have Kansas State in the lead. I think a decision will be coming within the next week. Arkansas is there. He is from Arkansas, and they offered, and they hosted him on an official visit. Again, that one's kind of like Baylor where – I kind of want to favor the other team in those kinds of recruitments because are you going to commit to Arkansas when you don't know if Sam Pivot's going to be there next week, let alone next year? So that's another one where I feel comfortable about K-State, but we'll see how it shakes out um, in the next week when he makes that decision. And then Kate Peters, that uh, four-star defense alignment out of North Dakota. I know we kind of went over recruits to talk about before the show, and I actually omitted that one, forgot it completely about him, but they love him. They really, really want him as well get out of West Fargo, so obviously the connections are there. The problem is, when called, I mean, you know, it is a problem, I guess. You're recruiting against the big boys for this one too, right? Oklahoma and Nebraska are right there. Nebraska has just as much regional pull, I imagine, it to him as K-State, even though the coaches, you know, were in Fargo for quite a while. Uh, Oklahoma, I think, you know, on a couple of different occasions, uh, he nearly committed there. I don't know if it's uh, they've waffled back and forth on how much they wanted him. You know, you hear a little bit about that. Um, the Kansas State visit was off, then it was back on. I heard it was a really, really good visit. So that one's going to be interesting. Uh, I don't think that one's going to last a whole lot longer either. I think Kansas State is much more competitive in that one than they were even a week ago. Well, I mean, how, how could you say no to the job security that Brent Venables has just secured by getting a $900,000 raise from uh, Oklahoma after just running roughshod through the Big 12 over the last uh, couple of years? So I don't know, D.Y., that, that seems concerning to me. Seems concerning to me. Yeah, 16 and 10 in the Big 12, now going to the SEC. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Got to feel great about what uh, Brent Venables is doing there. All right, well, to close, I mean, just how how do you feel about the class overall, this this 2025 class and how it's shaping up? You know, I feel better about it than I I think. I'm getting the vibe from some fans out there that they have some consternation. I know it's always recency bias, so the the most recent thing that happened is you lost a four-star Offensive lineman you thought was yours to Iowa, I get it. Um, but there's still there's margin for error there on the offensive line, especially if they can lay in like a Jones or a Heath. And we haven't even brought up Andrew Williams, um, who's I think going to be highly ranked at some point too. An offensive lineman out of Kirksville, Missouri, who I think is probably K State or Iowa State. So um 
and he's a BYU legacy and you visit BYU. So maybe you shouldn't discount them, but they seem to be third at this point. We'll see. Um, there are some spots that are lighter than others that they probably wanted to get more done this month, or or maybe they still can. Like safety. Like they missed out on Leah Almonte to Baylor, Sirius Stenor to West Virginia. You know, they, they had to push the pause button on Jaden Bradley to get some things, you know, in, in in working order there before they move forward. That one could still work out in the fall. So a little lighter at safety than they probably wanted to be at this point lighter at defensive tackle than they wanted to be at this point and probably lighter at offensive line than they wanted to be at this point. But the, the, the same grace there is there are still, you know, a few, you know, pretty good fish out there still to reel in on the offensive line. And you just landed one of your best. No, you did land your best offensive line. Since I covered K state in 2017 last year when you got what Caden Massey, Kyle Rockers, Gus Hawkins, Ryan Howard, and then Navarro Shunky is a walk-on who would have been scholarship typically because he was a four-star recruit anyways. Yeah, forgot about that already, man. So I, when we were talking about like winning big national recruitments, I mean, there were a couple in there that you just mentioned too. So staff's going to do it sometimes. They're not always going to be able to pull those in, especially, again, I can just stress as we live in this Power 2 SEC Big Ten world, it's, it's going to get a little tougher and tougher uh, when you're going up against some of the regional schools in that area. But... You guys know uh, where to go if you want the updates on the reg. Uh, check out on three uh, K State online there to uh, to get hooked up with that. You'll also get some info if you join our Patreon, patreoncom slash ma In order to do that, Dy was even posting in the uh, the Patreon uh, Discord yesterday. So if you want access to that big group chat of uh, K State fans and a, a great community of folks. Get to uh, patreoncom slash ma in order to do that. Uh, that's going to wrap it up for us here today. Appreciate Nick Springer behind the scenes. Thanks to our friends at Holiday Distillery and Homefield Apparel. For Derek Young, I'm John Kurtz. Thanks for listening to another edition of 3 Mom.